Hi, everybody. This is Joy Lagerie, and you're watching the Matured Musicians Group here on Facebook. And I have with us today Howard Comfort. He is a rocker, and he definitely looks apart today. So I can't wait to get into this interview. He sounds like a very interesting person, and I sure want to know his background. So I'm going to give a shout out to our sponsor, Luscious Moss Studio, that's owned and operated by Chad Quist in the uh, Edgewood, Washington area. And he has um, his studio set up mostly for drums. He's got quite quite the set up for drums. I don't know. He's got so many mics on those drums, I'd be afraid to sit there. And he also, also um, he has a set up for guitarists. He is the uh, one of the lead players for Heart by Heart. And he has a great studio. I've done work with him. He's still recording. In fact, I go in on Tuesday. So if you want to see him, just go to Facebook, search for Luscious Moss Studio. All Chad right. Quist is the man. Yeah, he's quite the guitarist, is he not? Oh, my gosh. First time I saw him on Facebook, I was like, are you kidding me? He's I know. Amazing. <laughs> I love his makeup. I told him I was jealous. <laughs> There you go, that too. <laughs> so now back to you. Um, I want to know how it is that someone as intelligent and poised as you got into music and definitely moved towards rock. Well, what happened with that was my mom started me on classical violin when I was six years old. And I did that for six or seven years. And that was great. And I was getting pretty good on the violin, getting some Beethoven and Brahms. But eventually I started gravitating towards this cool thing that was happening on the East Coast around, you know, the 60s, which was sort of this hippie guitar vibe, Grateful Dead thing. In fact, there's another story about the fact that my my dad was a college prof at Wesleyan, which happened to be one of the schools that the dead would stop at because the acid was really good there. Oh. But they would stop to get acid, but they would play shows there. And I actually went to a dead show. I didn't see the dead because they didn't arrive till two in the morning for that particular show. But I saw a whole bunch of dead warm-up bands when I was six. Very formative experience because it was all the frisbees right. and joints passing and guitars and girls going naked and stuff. So <laughs> this, I was like, well, I was kind of home in my element right there at about the age of six. So, uh, Again, a dead show. I don't think my parents really realized the gravity of what they were exposing me to. For them, these conservative white bread <laughs> academic types, they were like, well, lovey, there's a, there's a show for the children. That There's a concert that the, the children can go to on the green on the hill. Well, no, it's a dead show, you know. But uh, <laughs> anyways, it's just talking about the cultural divide there. Oh, here we go. We have another visitor that will periodically be passing through. This is Bon Scott. Oh, Kitty. my goodness. The Siamese. Yeah. Siamese boy. Yeah. Uh, I had a Russian uh, blue. I love, I love Siamese. They're great cats. He's only about three, four months old. He's a good boy. Oh, so no. he'll be passing through occasionally. I won't be able to hold him indefinitely, but he does. Uh, he likes to be held and petted. So. Now, if he plays the guitar, he's welcome. No. <laughs> well, he's named after our namesake now. So we can start, we can start with uh, Soul Stripper. Which, which has Bon Scott, right? Uh, <laughs> in case you don't know, Joanne, I'll tell you. Soul yeah. Stripper is uh, an ACDC tribute. ACDC, of course, had the iconic singer Bon Scott, who died before being replaced by Brian Johnson. Soul Stripper has both a Brian and, and a Bon. Uh, our Bon Scott is Andy Brodigan, who's just, just as good as they get. Uh, right now, we're lucky to have Kenny Wood coming back in on vocals on the Brian Johnson uh, our previous guy, Darren Stanley, who covered it very capably for three, four years, has had to go take a break. Kenny's around, so he's stepping in to step into that role. He does a, an outstanding job. We just played a great show where Kenny did his first show on the back in the band in uh, five or six years, and that was really gratifying for him and for us. Anyway, so that's all about Soul Stripper. I'll show you, I'll show around a Soul Stripper poster. There we go. Soul Stripper being the ACDC tribute. Featuring Andy Brodigan on. Oh, the yeah. Cool. So that's, so that's been my flagship operation for almost 20 years now. Uh, I remember when the boys, I remember when my boys who are just, uh, <clears throat> you know, they're, they're 21 and they're 19 and 21 now. So Aww. when they were about this age, Aww. you know, Soul Stripper was getting going and uh, I was a younger Angus. But uh, always, but always a tall Angus. If, if you're familiar again with ACDC, 
you know, Angus is only Angus is only five foot, uh, maybe eight, five foot nine or something. I'm six three, six four. Uh, uh, so it's it's a little. I'm a little bit of an outsized Angus. Always have been, but you know that's. Just going, I just try to do what he does, and my center of gravity is all wrong, so it's harder for me to do that that, that <laughs> scissor kick. But I do my best, you know. Oh, cool. Uh, we got some. We got some people coming on here. Um, that please identify yourself because I can't see who you are. But the first one says Howard is a man, and the other one said, "Great to see you, Howard." And if they'll leave their names, we'll know who they are. All right. Well, cool. That that's awesome. I'm yeah. glad to have some some listeners, some followers. I'm so grateful for followers that I have. I'm going to give a huge shout out right now uh, to a fellow by the name of Craig Beerman, who was the first promoter that ever uh, ever believed in me and and gave Soul Stripper or his predecessor Swift Kick, whatever we were. I think it was Swift Kick or Soul Stripper gave us a show, and wow. sure enough, there were people there and. Uh, I was a little yeah. bit of a late bloomer. I mean, that was only 20 years ago. But, you know, some people, some cats have been playing around town for 30, 40 years now. I mean, look at Tim Hall. He's been playing for 40 or 50, or 50 years or something like that. Something there we got a lot of comments, Howard. Um, I don't mean to interrupt you, but Ronnie Lee says, Hi, Howard. Good to see you again. It's Ronnie Lee. <laughs> I love Ronnie. And she yeah. and I have some stories and go back together. And I've, and I've had the pleasure to work with her a couple of times. What a rocket chick she is. Yeah, oh my gosh. Like I me. played with her she at the Twin Dragons. Yeah, I played with her that one at that looks the a lot like that, that baby. Oh, cool. <laughs> she is a little hot firecracker, I'll tell you. I also have a comment from a Jeffrey Girmas um, that says, Great to see you, Howard. And other people who have identified, but um, Ronnie said to you, Ha. We do. You bet I do. LOL. <laughs> she sure does. I've seen her last, her PRS. She's really great. Anyways, <laughs> I got, I did plug this thing in just in case we, uh, in case yeah. we need to play later on. But yeah. right now I just want to let you ask me whatever you want. To, did you have questions you want to ask me about? Yes, I do. I have kind of a format on here. Um, and so I'd like to go back to, we went from, <laughs> are you and you and Lynn Sorensen must be brothers because he started out with a classical guitar as well. There must be something about classic music that drives you guys to rock. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, well, we Lynn, were... Lynn and I are in some ways birds of a feather. Ah. And I remember being at a, a jam up at the Barrel Tavern, uh, something like maybe 18, 19, 20 years ago. And it was the first time Lynn and I had encountered one another. And he looked down the line of jammers. You know, you got Doug McGrew back there and Lynn's playing yeah. bass. And I think he said something like, hey, it's a, it's a Joey Ramon that can play guitar or some of that. So he sort of ID'd me and, and, and had me pegged. And I've always appreciated his wry wit, obviously his talent, uh, his and, and then his heredity. In fact, you know, in terms of coming from bad company and all the great bands that he's played yes. with. So obviously Lynn's a big dog and I've always looked at him as like, if, if I was going to get anywhere and be anything and try to be a competitor, certainly Lynn's a man to look for. And, and if you can count him as your colleague, I think you're lucky. So uh, <laughs> I enjoy that. I just got to work with Lynn at a jam uh, where he oh. asked me to come out and be his guitar player at rumors recently. Yeah. And of course I was very flattered and honored by that because I know that he's got access to all kinds of cats like Chad Quist, Ronnie Lee, Manuel Moraes. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, so for Manuel. me to be even mention in the same breath as, you know, all of that is for me just uh uh, very honoring. So we got anyway. some more comments here. I don't mean to interrupt you, but um, so I really enjoyed Howard's performance at Rumors a couple of weeks ago with Lynn Sorensen and Doug McGrew. That's Ray, Ray Raymond Hayden, Jessica Lynn Whitty's husband, and uh, Grieve the Astronauts uh, uh, band. And Ronnie said she's sitting there with Lee. Uh, I'm sorry, Lynn. <laughs> I just change his name uh sitting there with lynn and all he also says hi to you oh awesome 
<laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you, segueing from that, Lynn, of course, is the ultimate jam host. Uh, yeah. I've had some jams in my time, and I love being a jam host, too. And I put myself in the same, you know, kind of birds of a feather thing with Lynn on that, because we both love to host yeah. jams, and he's really good at it. And I've learned a lot from him over the years. Uh, another cat who's very good at it is Eric Asplund. He's going to be starting a jam at Rumors, I guess, uh, coming up on Saturday. Yes. He's yeah. got some other guitar players yeah. coming out, like... Because uh, I I'm book he wanted me to do it all maybe but I can't do it all because I'm booking shows on Saturdays I've already got to but I'll be doing four or five of them that are already on the books other great guitar players will be working with Eric on Saturdays and so it's going to be really cool it's going to be uh, I know I know he's going to try to get you know maybe Kenny Wood I know he's going to try to get maybe uh, oh I don't know maybe Bob Randolph uh, possibly uh, the big guy Christopher the Wookie uh, on the guitar Christopher Martin. Uh, so he's got other players that he could get on guitar as well, like Lynn. Now, I'm not going to say he has access to all the guitar players Lynn's got, because Lynn can get almost anybody in the state, probably. But <laughs> but but Eric knows his way around town. He's been hosting jams for a long time. So shout out to Eric Asplund, another very, very talented bass player who, again, like Lynn, hosts jams. And we'll right. be doing so at Rumors. <laughs> so we do have a, a, a few more comments, man. I've never had this many. I, I think uh, uh, this is fantastic. This guy says he didn't give me his name, but he said I'm on his road crew. And then it says Ronnie, and this is from Raymond, I believe. Uh, Ronnie, tell Lynn his vodka needs drinking. <laughs> what, what does it say? Tell Ronnie what? It says Ronnie, tell Lynn his vodka needs drinking. Ray from Ray. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, um, it just goes to show it's a very um, you know, the Tacoma music scene is really cool because it's it's big and it's expansive, but it's it's not that big. We kind of all know each other. Everybody's Yes, friends. it's like a big family. Or, or if it's not one family, it's several families that are very That's much true. related true. And, and incestuously <laughs> involved. So I just know, you know, I'm a, I got a day job, but for me, the passion is the music. And I've just always just wanted to try to be somehow a well-rounded player and band leader. It's just morphed into something where... Uh, you know, you know, hopefully I can, I can count my, what I count myself lucky is, is to have, you know, friends in the league of, you know, Doug McGrew, Lynn yeah. Sorensen, Ronnie. Yeah. I mean, these are, these are some pretty big names in the yeah. local industry. Jerry yeah. Miller, Randy yeah. Hanson, just to meet some of these players and be on the same stage for me is such an honor. I'm just going to, again, getting back to Craig Beerman, who believed in me so much and still does. He's put me uh, opening for the Hell's Bells this yes. summer at his barbecue and by golly i've been chasing those girls for so long because they do an acdc tribute also joanne i don't know if you know about the hell's bells no well I they're very very right. good they're uh they're they play extremely accurately uh they're they they're a guitar player uh andrea adrian she has all this energy she's just awesome she looks great she sounds great and of course they're girls you see and yeah. so They've oh got my certain God. assets that yes. my soul stripper band could never bring that are quite, you know, scintillating. I mean, sexy, let's just face it, okay? <laughs> so they sell like crazy, and I, I can't draw like they can. I can't charge like they can. They're, they're like very, like, big-time national sort of act, honestly, yeah. uh, if you didn't know about Hell's Bells. And uh, also, you know, shout out to maybe Problem Child. It's like a little bit more well-known ACDC tribute than my soul stripper. In my own defense, though, I'll say I spread myself very thin because in addition to Soul Stripper, I do, you know, a Zeppelin tribute. And then we've started doing the Guns N' Roses tribute. Yeah. And uh, and now I'm doing a Skinner tribute. And on top of all this, I also have had this classic rock band called uh, Sub Vinyl Jukebox for many, many years. Sub Vinyl, I'll just say that's a, that's a classic rock band. We've been doing that for about 15 years. The, the uh, lineup has changed dramatically over the years. We've had some awesome singers. Terry Merglot comes to mind. Uh, Hang on oh a minute. Oh, my goodness. So many, so many great singers that we've had in that band over time. But um, right now we've got uh, a gal named Princess Ginto who's singing. Of course, my the love of my life, uh, Renee Perez, is fronting in that band. I think Renee's going to walk through and maybe introduce herself at a certain point. Or she should. She should come say hi. But... Uh, the fabulous singers we have in, in sub vinyl right now, what with Renee Princess and then Kenny Wood on the bass. I mentioned Kenny, he's also singing with the ACDC. There's Renee. There she oh, is. Hi, Renee. 
<laughs> so not only is Kenny singing with AC with my Soul Stripper band, but he's also playing bass in sub vinyl right now. Um, and I'm trying and to get things. this. So we've got some really strong vocals in this band right now, and it's always it's always been a strong vocal band. Honestly, I've always been very proud of my classic rock bands. Um, but right now, it's just at a high point. So we we are uh, again that band will be opening for Hell's Bells this summer. And uh, we're looking forward to that. I think that's August 19th at uh, most likely that same location. What's it called? The Dua Diddy site or something like that down in towards Olympia or, or Tenino. Ten okay. Uh, anyway, more got, on that we, later. So uh, yeah, hold on a minute. Talked about Soul Strip. We've talk, <laughs> talked about Subvinyl Jukebox. Those are good flavors. I will also go ahead and just launch right into a subject near and dear to my heart, which, of course, is uh, Leonard Skinner. And we've recently come up with a new band, a new flavor. It's called Leonard Sinner. Now, after all this time, including going through, you know, a, uh, a, a Guns N' Roses band that we're still doing, which of course is Sweet Child. Uh, you know, after all these bands, you know, to add another flavor, you might ask, well, why would I add another flavor? I'll tell you why. It was so appealing to me because in this band, I get to sing. I get to just stand out front. I don't have to play guitar, which is a departure for me, obviously, having been a guitar player for all these years and still, you know, playing. But it gives me something a little bit different to do, you know, sort of night after night to think about, well, just being the singer on this particular night. So uh, I am Howard, a funny fan. Howard, Howard, hold one here. Um, your, your, your cinematographer wants you to move a little, a little further over. I know why you're doing that because you're showing all your beautiful instruments in the background, <clears throat> but he's trying to get you on screen and he's trying to take. Okay. I'll get, I'll get a little more centered then. There we and go. he said he's recording the whole thing and Ronnie's laughing here. <laughs> is that Donald? My, my, is that yeah, Donald? Yes, yes, yes. I don't know. Well, shout out to Donald Maldor, our That's staff it, videographer. Yeah. <laughs> we love <Yeah>. it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so I'm hoping to get him on here too. I, I'm trying to reserve a, a slot so he can give us a whole different angle. But one of the things that I was interested in asking you was um, how you moved from classical violin to guitar and what age did you start gigging? And what kind of band were you in in the beginning? Yeah, and, and I get to blame my mom for sort of a little bit of a late start. It's a mixed, it's a mixed bittersweet thing because my, she was very encouraging and really got me going early on the violin and provided nothing but the best classical training. And I, and I was moving towards, I mean, she would have liked me to sort of chair the Boston Philharmonic, you know, first seat or something. That, that would have been her dream. But unfortunately... Despite all this, you know, music and theory and, and choral training and, and all of that stuff that I got in some good finger dexterity that I developed on the fingers, I was ready to pitch it by about age 14 or 15 because rock and roll and the guitar sort of beckoned. And I was starting to just be more interested in playing the violin as kind of something I could morph into a country or rock instrument. And then I started feeling frustrated that these guys were all rocking way harder than I could rock on the <laughs> fiddle and, or, or, or uh, violin. And I just oh, wanted to, right. to do what they were doing on the guitar. So, but I was a little bit late getting into it by 14 or 15 like that, you know, not really picking up till 13, 14, 15, because some other kids, of course, had already been going since age four or five or six. That's why I get, that's why I got my boys going at age four or five on the, on the guitars, <laughs> like right away. So Henry and Henry and Sam, I'm going to give a shout out to my boys. Love them so much. Uh, Henry's 21 up in Bellingham, uh, plays bass and and uh, just a, a cool kid. Sam is the 19 year old phenom who uh, fronts Blue Avenue along along with Princess, who I mentioned. She's now singing with Sub Vinyl because Sam's in Nashville now, either handing the guitar players their asses or getting his ass handed to him, depending on which day. But he's down there lighting it up as a fresh. Uh oh, you froze. <laughs> well, hopefully he'll come back to us. Um, he doesn't hear all these. He can't. He can't. See Are we that. still there? Okay, yeah, we're, we're back. back. We're back. <laughs> anyway, so I, more about my boy. I'll, I'll and I'll shut up about my kids real quick here. But I just got to say, so Sam and Sam and Princess are, of course, an item. They're an item musically. She's going to Berkeley College of Music next year, but she's been around all year this year. So. 
when it became clear that Sam would be down there, and although Blue Avenue will be reuniting for other shows and more writings and more albums later, despite the kids going off to different schools, when it became clear that Princess was still around and available this year, and we had lost a, a different singer from Sub Vinyl, I was like, well, wait a minute. And Renee and I were doing the math. We're like, we, could we possibly get Princess in Sub Vinyl? Because she's absolutely unbelievable as far as certain things. And uh, so we got we asked her in, and sure enough, so Princess Ginto, my boy's girlfriend and collaborator, co-founder co and co-fronter of uh, Blue Avenue. And those kids have written some songs that, listen, I used to write songs. I used to publish songs, have some albums. I mean, it, but nothing like, nothing like sort of what they, on a league of what my boy's able to write. And I don't know where he got all this like brilliant theory or, or whatever, but it might have been because again he had the earlier access to the training on guitar. I would have, so I'll take some credit for that. But well, uh, no, Blue Avenue can't say enough about the, how proud I am of of my boys, uh, yeah, Sam absolutely. and Princess, of course, and and of and of my other boy Henry, who's a a phenom in his own right and getting pretty solid on the bass guitar. So we're very blessed when the boys come home. We just rock out, rock the house here, oh, well, back with the, you know, the shed, and that's just what we do. Uh, you know, and uh, I'm going to mention another cat who does that like no other. How about the guy who has raised the kids who are honestly rock stars in their own right? And I'm talking about Mr. Steve Unger and his offspring with Sin, uh, Sin Circus. Have you, do you know those people? No. <laughs> well, you, well, Joy, I'll tell you. Now that I'm going to educate you on the local scene. And that is this. Steve Unger is the man. And his kids are like the up and coming man. And it's so gratifying because, see, Steve plays with uh, Metal Church and they're worldwide. I mean, that's big stuff. Metal Church is, I mean, you were talking and, and not only does he play with Metal Church, but he's got this Live 85 now, which is an Elvis band. So he's out there fronting this Elvis tribute. He's, he's got these amazing like suits. So Steve is Steve is completely the man. Um, and, and then of course, and there he is with his Alive 85, but then his kids uh, in Sid Circus, they're just so badass. So, you know, about six, eight years ago, I started telling my boy, Sam, Sam, okay, so watch these, watch these kids in Sid Circus, watch the younger boys because, uh, you know, they've had nothing but the best training and uh, the best loving advancement from their worldwide rock star daddy, uh, Steve Unger. So. One more shout out to Steve. I love him so much. And he's a great friend and a, a, a great man. So there you we go. We have a few more comments here, Howard. Um, says, we love you, Howard Comfort, and his beautiful girlfriend, Renee Perez. <laughs> Another one says, the maestro rocks. Donald said uh, that you host great parties. <laughs> And uh, Jennifer, I believe this Jennifer Birdie was the one who made a comment earlier about you rock. And uh, that's that clears up all our, our uh, comments here. But you didn't really answer my question uh, about what was the first band that you you actually played in and and approximately when that was. I can I can tell you again, sort of uh, more along the theme of this uh, slightly late bloomer mid to late bloomer. I, so I was playing the guitar again at what, 14, 15, getting sort of decent through college. Once I was at college, I was fully devoted to learning the guitar as well as, you know, trying to get some studies done. I didn't, I didn't do academically terribly well at the UW, which is where I came you know, from the East coast to go to school in 79. Uh -huh. I came out as a freshman. So here I am in Seattle learning to play the guitar, having been a little bit challenged again by the fact that I was so late in the game, having played so much violin for all those years. Again, mixed blessing. So I'm learning to play and I'm getting pretty decent. I'm at a frat and I didn't really get to play. I mean, I got, there was a gong show at the UW and I remember <laughs> we were, a bunch of me and my frat buddies were in a band that was so bad that it got gonged. So I'm not going to count that as a live, that really was, but it did, it did cement my drive. I was like, well, never again am I going to get gonged off stage. <laughs> And it wasn't my fault and I did my part right and all this stuff, but blah, blah, blah. So we got gone. So that was, that was college. Now we got to law school and, uh, you know, three years later, this was about 86 and, you know, renewed fervor. I'd been practicing long and hard and I was ready to go and I got some mates and sure enough, there was these law school, um, 
sort of law school parties that were more or less a student parties at the student union building or whatever. They had yeah. one that was called the Tacky Tropical, and they had another event called the Law Review, which was not law review like the guys that, that write the uh, AAA papers for the law review that are the egghead students. No, not that law review. It was R-E-V-U-E, so law review as in law, cabaret sort of review. You get it? So we were in the show, and because we were the house band, we were – we. We played and we sang some risque songs, lampooning the professors during the <laughs> you know show portion. And then after the show portion, we sort of rocked the house with a, a dance. So these things we were able to do because we had a rock band. So I was a little bit late. That was 86. So at 86, I was 25, which I think, you know, I consider that a little late to be coming in, you know, just getting out playing it at the age of 25. No, my boy's been out playing since he was 15 years, 14, 15 years old. But anyways, there I was. Law school freshman, and we're at the dance, but we're doing good. The girls are dancing. Everybody likes it. Uh, I was hooked, you know. Um, so, yeah, since 86. So I've been doing it since 86. Got through law school, came out in 89. And you've been practicing since 89. And been being a guitar player since 89. Now, it did take me till, in terms of getting really serious about the band leader and sort of having a band out on the scene thing, that probably was like right around when my kids got to be, um, well, again, two and three, two and four. They were kind of up and running and some things happened. And I wound up right here in Puyallup. And the boys have been, you know, while they were here, they're off at school now, but right next door forever. And <laughs> able to operate here out in Puyallup in our little, our little fiefdom that we have. And uh, uh, so... What happened with that is, again, getting serious about it about 2002, 2003, about getting a band out on, on the local scene, maybe 2001. So I think Soul Stripper was formed in about 2001 or two, basically. So um, mm -hmm. at that point, I, I decided, well, look, we are good enough. We can do this. We had a singer who could recreate the ACDC tones, both the Brian Johnson and the Bon Scott, possibly enough to where people kind of looked at it and liked it and took notice and told us we were great. <laughs> so we did that. That was called Soul Stripper. And again, that's been my first band. That's the one, as I mentioned, uh, Craig Arrow would, took some some note of it again, has got us maybe just a little cachet. What can I say? I mean, we we got we got selected to open for Randy Hansen a couple times, he, some parties here and there. Anytime you're on the stage with this with a guy like Randy, uh, you're gonna play up to to that, you're gonna try to play up to that godly level because the first time I saw Randy, first time we opened for Randy Hansen, I'll tell you this story real quick. Um, it was at a place called the Cedarwood Dome. And I had walked my big Marshall stack. Uh, this is a Marshall half stack here, right, right there. That, that's a half stack. I had a, what was called a full stack and it's an ancient thing. And I had walked it up the stairs because there's no elevator at the Cedarwood Dome. And I walked it up the stairs and there up on the stage was a man who had two Marshall full stacks. <laughs> and they looked a lot like my one. And I lugged it up on the stage, which was another considerable feat. Got it up there. And he looked at me and said, Oh, you guys, you must be the opening band. I never seen another guy with another Marshall full stack like that, he said. <laughs> and I said, and I've never been in the presence of you or these two that are, and his were all, like his grill cloth cover was all perfect. It was all, and you know, Randy's methodical. He's meticulous. He's got his fuzz face. He's got his gear. He's setting it all up. And I was like, so we got to talking and I had the temerity to say to Randy, because you know, I, was, I was okay. I was coming, coming along in my playing. I was like, well, Randy, I know some Hendrix. I could play rhythm for you if you want. Because I'd, I'd never seen him play. I just knew he had a Hendrix trip here. So I was like, I, if you want me to play some rhythm for you, he kind of laughed. And we went on talking. Well, when I opened up, we did our little ACDC thing. We did our hour, you know, Angus, hour and a half, whatever. And then when I saw Randy play for the first time, I was standing there watching him. I almost wanted to go crawl under a rock or just, I don't know. It was just, it was a godly experience. <laughs> if you ever watched Randy play on a good night when he's, well, every time, every time he plays, every time, it's always unbelievable. Okay. And um, he's, he has, re he could out Hendrix Hendrix, that man, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, so, anyways, 
So I'll never forget that. And I've, and I've seen Randy play so many times since that I've had the luxury or the uh, lovely uh, experience of being able to open for him many times since then, uh, probably five or six, seven times maybe. And it's always so great. Uh, and Joy, if you haven't seen Randy play the Jimi Hendrix, honestly, it's, it's a, God, a godly experience for somebody like me who is a guitar player. I, I revere him highly. Randy, if you're out there, you know, mad props. What can I say? Honestly, he's Randy is the Mandy. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> now, usually I go into um, the portion of what you did during COVID. So I'd like to briefly touch on that. But I'd also like to see your guitar skills that you talking about here. I think that would be a real treat for anybody watching <laughs> well, who hasn't heard you. I mean, well, I, I don't know I, how I skillful I'm going to be today, Joanne, just because uh, it's been a long weekend. <laughs> um, and I don't have my I don't have my band here, you know. But I could make yeah. a thousand excuses. What song would you like me to play, Joanne? My Lord, I don't know rock. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know rock. Well, Joanne, I thought you had a band. Well, yes, I did, but but we played classic rock. I mean, the stuff from the fifties, sixties, seventies, some eighties, some nineties, um, and yeah, but but not. Not this stuff. I mean, this stuff. But is you were you me. you were doing classic rock. Yeah. What yeah, kind of classic rock songs did and you do? And country and traditional country, newer country. Okay. We did it all. We did polkas. We did sambas. We <laughs> we even did. Oh God, you don't want to know. Anyway. Well, sounds like you kind of ran the gamut. I like to be a kind of a little bit of a, a Renaissance man on the guitar. A little bit. I mean, I'm kind of. Meeting the potatoes. I'm pretty brutal style. Um, I'm a butt rocker, you know. I just get away with what I can, honestly. But uh, my strength probably on the guitar is that I know a lot of songs. Um, and I know how to stand there and more or less play them with cats and, and help. Again, going back to the jam thing. It's, it's why I'm maybe a band leader or a, or a jam night leader, just sort of intuitively, inherently, because what I want to do, I want to I want to play up to as high of a level as I can with whoever I'm with, whether it's my boys or others. And I want to bring them along and I want to be able to get up there and soar on top. But I know how important it is to have that foundation and that that ship moving along under you with all parts without the train wrecks, of course. So yeah. my strength, if anything, Joy, as a player, one of them probably is just that, um, again, knowing, knowing a number of songs and then being more or less a guy who's who's playing as a band leader, maybe playing thoughtfully. Because while, of course, I have a reputation as a loud player and I am a loud player and a, an over-the-top player, over the years, I've learned that a lot of what's what's good about playing also is to leave the spaces, and you have to leave space for the drums and the bass and, and all this. And, of course, vocals, you can't be stomping all over your vocalists all the time. So there's all kinds of things about restraint that, you know, come to us players over time. And, I mean, but it's, it's great when you're a kid. I mean, you just you, – you might, like, start just to be a little bit more radical. You might be just, like, sort of – you could get away with like really aggressive playing, maybe like like like. A... You know, you can get away with doing that for hours and hours and hours, but as you get older, you might be a little bit more like inclined to share solos with others and just have more fun not being like that lead hog sort of thing, <laughs> right? Right. God. So there you go. Um, put myself right out of tune doing that. <laughs> Anyways, that was a little Jimi Hendrix. A little that was uh, called Voodoo Child. Um, uh, I don't know uh, how to put this to you, but the fact is that music has to be about outreach and connection with others. And frankly, I've always been a player who, although I do love the guitar so much, I've always really relished playing with 
singers, like for example, uh, Carlito Tweetin of Led Zeppelin, another band that really has we haven't we haven't done justice to Led Zeppelin. Now, I talked about Soul Stripper, and I talked about uh, some vinyl jukebox, and I showed around the poster for Leonard Sinner, my new uh, Skinner tribute. We talked about that, and I think we touched on. Sweet Child. Let's go back to Led Zeppelin and Sweet Child. Now, Sweet Child is the Guns N' Roses band. Pretty recent. It's only been going like a year, year and a half. And then, so in the middle of this Sweet Child poster is a guy with a red bandana on. That's the Sweet Child, Carlito, Carlito Tweetin. He's the Sweet Child. Now, that Slash guy, the fake Slash, that's me. I've been doing a fake, I've been doing, a, a, you know, a Howard Slash for uh, you know, a year and a half or something. We got two 45-minute sets, but that just by the by. Now, Carlito's tweeting, who's amazing, is also in Led Zeppelin. Now, Renee has arranged the Led Zeppelin jacket. I don't know if you can see it back there, but there's the Zeppelin patch. So anyways, so Carlito, what can I say about Carlito? Uh, amazing talent, amazing, amazing range. Part of the reason why I've always, Joy, wanted to, wanted to work so much with singers is because I don't have a very high range and I love to do those, you know, you know, I like to do Triumph and Scorpions and ACDC and Zeppelin and all this high range stuff that I'm just not going to sound all that good singing probably. So that's why I've always gravitated towards having a, you know, an ACDC singer or a Zeppelin singer, or in this case, Carlito Tweetin can do the Zeppelin or, oh, he could sing some ACDC, but one of his special fortes is singing the, the uh, Axl Rose. So his Axl Rose is very, very close. We do do that tribute, again, Sweet Child. And uh, we do uh, two 45-minute sets of GNR, you know, an hour and a half of GNR, take a break, and then we just relax and play classic rock, as we often do with some of our other flavors. So that's kind of a preferred format for me. If I can get in, get out, get a couple sets of uh, tribute, and then relax, and then just kind of, you know, play some old butt rock, I'm good with that. With... Uh, with the ACDC band, we've always made a, a habit of just playing three sets of ACDC. Why do we do that? Well, I'll tell you, because we do two Bond and then one Brian. And again, I'm going to go back to Andy Brodigan does our two sets of Bond. A Bond. And then uh, right now, of course, uh, Kenny Wood has come back to the band. And this the same guy who is right here in Leonard Sinner playing the lead in Leonard Sinner. Where, where's my... Right over here, this guy, Kenny Wood. So he's playing the lead guitar in Leonard Sinner. He's singing Brian Johnson in my Soul Stripper band. And he's playing bass in Sub Vinyl Jukebox. So he's really back with a vengeance. We love Kenny so much. I'm also going to give a shout out to Bobby Randolph. Bob Randolph is kind of my right-hand man. Now, he's not in Soul Stripper, Joy, but he's in every single other band that I've got. Uh, Sub Vinyl. Led Zeppelin, Leonard Sinner, and Sweet Child. And in every band, Bobby is the second guitar and multi-instrumentalist. He's the glue that holds us all together. He is, in this poster, he would be this guy right here. That's Bobby Randolph. Again, silky smooth player, uh, great background, smooth background vocals, uh, keyboards, and, and just that personality that keeps the wheels on continuously. So huge shout out to Bobby. My right hand man for geez eight seven eight years now, um, can't can't forget about then. Uh, I, it does lead me to, to talk about want to talk about some other really important things. Like if I was to give shout outs, I'm a guitar player that's really rhythm bound, and I don't really get that like you know excited or into it maybe until I hear my drums and stuff. Like honestly, like I mean I can play whatever you want, but I mean as far as like performing, you know. So drums are a huge, huge aspect. We already mentioned one drummer in this broadcast, which would be Doug McGrew. And right. he's right up at the sort of tippy right. top of the apex as far as the pecking order around town. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Mills, uh, yeah. Doug McGrew, Jeff Kathan, some other cats. But uh, right hey. up, right up near, very near or at the top of the food chain are the following drummers that I want to give shout outs to. Dean Holmes. <laughs> Doesn't get much better. Doug McNeely. Sweet player. Malcolm Monaghan. He's kind of a young phenom. It's, it's unbelievable, honestly. Eddie Mendoza. Triple A, triple A class player that I that I work with. Mike Lee from, uh, oh, just from a bunch of, you know, I have a very deep 
uh, drum dossier or Rolodex. And it has to be. It has to be great cats like those players I just mentioned. Because for me, I can't really get excited if the drums are halfway or really if anything's wrong. <laughs> anything's going wrong, heaven, to, heaven forbid, right? It's got to be yeah. perfect. So anyway, <laughs> shout out to all those great drummers I just named and more. There, there's more, but those are the ones I'm remembering right now. <laughs> So we're going to need to take a break for a minute here and, and recognize our, our listeners. And uh, when you were playing, we had a player who didn't identify saying that um, he sounded great. Another one says it was a, it's a great interview. Uh, Princess, is, Princess is amazing. Uh, Elvis lives. <laughs> yeah, Elvis uh, lives and Steve Unger. Listen, I was I, back welcome. to Steve for a second. I was watching a video he was doing because he's got this band called Alive 85. And the thing is that they do some standard Elvis stuff, but then they also do some stuff like as if the king were still alive in 85, what would he have done? And he was doing like, I think he was singing Bridge Over Troubled Water the other day, a la Elvis. Yeah. And it was just so great. I was watching it on the video. Just going, his tone was, anyways, it was all that. Yep, yep, yep. Another shout out for Steve Unger. And then they say, um, I have somebody here who says that you're you're you that you're the kind that lifts other musicians up. Uh, but seriously, you're great. And then they said, Joanne, you are invited to our next jam at Howard's. Well, okay. Yes. <laughs> and then this one says, Howard, you are a legend, you're an amazing talent, and when you play, you mesmerize us. Such an honor to see you. <laughs> well, you know, it's all music to my ears, so don't, but don't stop. <laughs> no, but, honestly, I, it's so, it's very gratifying to me to get, you know, some recognition. I'm, I am very small time, very small potatoes. I'm, I'm a regional guy. Uh, I'm, I'm lucky to get asked to any kind of a big event like, like the Beer Man Barbecue or something like that. For me, that's a big deal. But I think it should be because honestly, there are others that, are not you know running law practices there are some full-time people that are like like i'm gonna i'm gonna mention uh some some people like manuel moraes and susan kendall who i think are full-time musicians yeah i believe they, I I believe they sure as heck are and they are just top of the business and of course they work with manny and doug and yeah. that there's yeah. a reason for that because they are you know the best some of the best uh players and, and singers and they are full-time and uh, so I try to give it, you know, my time and I try to put in um, the effort and the energy, but I am spread a little thin in that I'm trying to learn so many different songs so, so many times. So, but it's just practice, practice, practice. And I try to keep up and it's not always perfect. It's not always pretty, but I do my best that I have fun with it, you know? <laughs> I've heard some big stars mess up like Dolly Parton. She's, yeah, <laughs> then we all do it. We all do it. <laughs> and uh, Patty Nelson always loves singing with you, Howard. Uh, gone eight years, January 29th. Do you know who oh, this Oh, Patty. Well, Patty, Patty passed uh, again, yeah, eight years ago. Uh, she was a local luminary on the blues rock scene, quite a blues mm -hmm. singer. Uh, mm -hmm. She had, unfortunately, some real, you know, severe health issues, and she did pass. It was very, it was very sad. There was, quite some memorials to her um, at the time. I remember some musical events. I probably hosted some of them and uh, Patty. Yeah. We, we miss her dearly. Those, those that do know her and did know her, uh, her and her, her daughters, of course. Uh, anyway, what can I say? Uh, Patty was, she had a great voice had a great heart and uh, she's deeply missed. So uh, it's, it's, it's too bad to think about all the fallen ones. We have so many on our, uh, local scene that you know have passed uh and of course the internet and nationally i mean we're none of us are getting younger <laughs> Just, but um no yeah patty was patty was one of the great ones and had a great voice i'm going to talk a little bit about uh female vocalists now patty nelson who again we were just talking about great local blues singer sadly departed um my gal, Renee Perez, is, I'm going to say, I'm going to put her with, with some of the best of the best up there. We were just talking about Susan Kendall. I don't think Renee quite has Susan's range, but Renee really can hit 
hard and heavy on the songs that she knows, which are getting to be more and more. Why? Because she and I work and play every day. So after three years, she knows she knows a ton of songs. She probably knows 100 songs. So she's a real force to be reckoned with. So some vinyl jukebox. Again, Princess Ginto was amazing, is amazing. Uh, we have had so many great girl singers in sub vinyl. For example, uh, we had a girl named Amy who was absolutely amazing. We had Pat, uh, Pam, oh, I can't remember Pam's last name, but that's Bob Randolph's ex, uh, Pam, who just was just such a great singer. Uh, again, talking about Bobby before. Um, We've had a lot of good boy singers as well. We, we had Sean Hofley who came through. Uh, we had Mark Mayberry in Sub Vinyl Jukebox, who later went on to Steppenwolf Revisited fame. So Mark was Mark was quite amazing. Carl Tucker was a, a, was and is a great singer. So Kenny Wood has sang vocals for uh, for Sub Vinyl. So there's a lot of lot of people that have been through the band, but we just happen to be at a really strong. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put up the poster again for Sub Vinyl. It just happens to be at a strong place right now now this is a pretty representative actually we're working right now with bobby and dean and then well okay yeah not everybody else that's here is in the band i'm, I'm there i'm down there anyways sub vinyl jukebox that's it's a good if you see us around come around town to see sub vinyl we are doing uh classic and modern rock and we are are at a good place with that band right now again with kenny on the on the bass that's so I have a question for you, Howard. Uh, yes. During what was happening with you uh, during COVID, uh, how did that affect your your business? And uh, honestly, I'll tell you, Joy, COVID in some ways, I, it, it, I I didn't let it hurt me. I just was bound and determined not to, and. <laughs> We more or less just never stopped out here. We kept playing out in the shed. If we had more time, I'd take you on a video tour back. Yeah, there. I'd we, love to we, see it. <laughs> we didn't, you know, we tried to be judicious about it. There were times, there were times when things were so severe in terms of the media hype and the social overlay that we yeah. chose to be very discreet and quiet about our musical, musical activities, some mm -hmm. weeks, some months. But for the most part, we just had a, steady ongoing weekly family jam that would occur uh most most fridays and we never really stopped you know despite despite orders <laughs> sorry the music doesn't stop around here it never did it never will and it, it certainly did not during all that pandemic i hate to say bs to some extent and yeah no i don't try to wear a mask as much as I can. And no, uh, just for those out there, I, I don't care one way or the other. I'm not vaccinated, but and I, and I don't intend to be, but that's just me. But whatever on that, it's not about politics. It's not about that. It's more about the music. Our music continued and as it will. And yeah, so yeah. Uh, we came through, I would say, not to say stronger, but what it did do was polarize a core of our jammers continued to be our our jammers and our friends and our family and our. Uh oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I had to, I had to make that call go away. Hopefully, I hope that didn't mess up things. No, hold that thought because the Honey, I think we saying... messed something up there with that. Somebody tried to call in. <laughs> Don, Donald is saying that he has a lot of uh, full-length playing of your jam. Somebody tried to just get some. Let's see. Okay, we'll come back. Let's and see. This is only 10, so we got 10 more okay, hold on, hold on. Let's get back in here. Um, let's go to your rest. We'll get back in there. Here we go. Here we go. It's all right. You're okay. Um, it's okay. We're coming. We're going right now. Uh, hang on, Howard. We'll get no, we just back. go here. Open in Safari. Uh oh. <laughs> Well, it's just me here. He'll come back. Anyway, uh, Donald was saying that he has full lengths of hours of music um, of, of Howard's gems and that he plays from 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. in the studio and then a couple hours uh, at the in his house. And he has a great collection of music that he has put out there. So... <laughs> and somebody says, hi, Renee. <laughs> Yeah, Howard, let me get you back on here. Okay, we're back. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I, 
I think some lawyer was trying to call me or something. I had to blow it off. <laughs> I, I told I told Renee we we're going to take the day off in honor of the in honor of your publicity, which we thank you for. Again, I, I want to thank you for having me on this. Is this a podcast? No, actually, it's a stream. It's a live stream. Okay. Yeah, and I will place this place place this on my Facebook. I don't get when I do that. I don't get a people joining my matured musicians group, which I'm trying to build. But hopefully, people will you know come in and and see see our, my people live. And then after about a week, depending upon how well you're doing if for people who are working and then tune in later, I put you on Facebook. Once you're on my channel on Facebook, you stay there so you can, you know, have your people look at that or whatever. If you're if you're uh, wanting to say something to them and wanting to show them the interview. So it's there for you. It'll stay there. Well, I sure appreciate it. I mean, what can I say? This is really just very fun to to do with you this afternoon and I appreciate it. So I guess I, we're going down for posterity in some time immemorial broadcast. I guess I better not do anything too radical. Uh, but, uh, you already anyways, have. <laughs> who else have I not given a Talk shout out to? Uh, um, somebody says, uh, Kevin, Kevin Sibley. Um, you forgot to mention Kevin Sibley. He's one of your great drummers. He's fantastic. What does Kevin say? He, and well, this person said, Howard, you forgot to mention Kevin Sibley, one of your great drummers. He's fantastic. you know, she and she, whoever said that is absolutely right. How could I? And I was kind of thinking in terms of like the jam because Kevin is in a whole league of his own. He does my ACDC, and he's Hi. that's his niche, and he's mm -hmm. an absolutely phenomenal drummer. He's not in any of the other bands. Some of those other players that I mentioned are in. They swirl around through the other constellations. But Kevin, strictly ACDC, always on time and always so good. Absolutely. Huge shout out for Kevin. He's been with the band for, Kevin's probably been, I'm going to say like nine years, something like that. Nine, maybe nine, ten years with the oh, small that's stripper. A, yeah. That's a yeah. long time to keep people. <laughs> that's I, a long time I, to keep one big guy named Kevin. And, uh, and that's, and I'm so gratified. Now, you know, I'll tell you what, Renee says I should I should mention my sister. And I, I guess she's right. This is my sister, Martha. She's a big figure in my life in that she and I are pretty close. This was taken when I was like 13 and she was like 15, I think. So Martha is a, a boat broker up in Seattle. She manages me to some extent because she's my older sister. We don't have our parents anymore. And uh, I love her so much. She's been a, a great sister to me forever. I'm so blessed to have such great family. My kids, I love them so much. Renee's got great kids. She, and she's, of course, my family. And, uh, and her kids are my kids, really. So, you know, between the kids, they give us so much joy and pleasure and our, our great families that we have. Uh, I'm also going to give a shout out to the mother of my children, who's Diana Comfort, who, you know, without which... Young Sam wouldn't be playing the guitar and without which young Henry wouldn't be playing the bass. So huge shout out to the mother of the children. She's an amazing woman. Um, shout out to, uh, you know, Tim Hatch from Rocket, who plays with Kenny Wood. Because if you want another, and if you, Joy, want another person to think about uh, interviewing who's like mad, Tim Hatch has come back on the scene. I think he used to be around here, but then he's come back over the last couple of years. And I'm just like, what? Who is this guy? He sings so well. And so Kenny picked him up and they formed this band Rocket. And so Rocket right now, between Kenny on the guitar and Tim Hatch, if you haven't, if you local rock and rollers haven't seen Rocket, I'm going to give a shout out to them because they are really doing it to it. They've got Doug McNeely, who I already mentioned on drums, uh, a cat named Jeremy on spade, uh, on bass, who knows his way around the bass. So very good band. Um, I think those are mostly the people I wanted to remember. You know, all my family, all my great uh, friends, family, associates, and mentors. Honestly, when I talk about somebody like a, a Lynn Sorensen or Emmanuel Moraes, for me, that is like a mentor, really. Those, those would be because... They've been doing it so seriously and, and professionally for so long and so successfully that any musician would look at them and just go, well, how do we do it like almost as good like that or something, you know? So there you go. And that's why uh, Lynn has Lynn and Manny and Doug have uh, such a great jam on Wednesdays. And I'm looking forward to doing some more with them. And then again, as I mentioned with Eric Asplund on some Saturdays and he'll have either myself or other 
least passively good or very good guitar players on Saturday nights at uh, <laughs> at Rumors, what used to be known as Uncle Sam's. So okay, is that a dangerous place to go? It's really not dangerous uh, because it is or was having a reputation as a biker bar. You could say yeah. it's, you could say it's safer than any other place because you could have security from other bikers. I myself have never even seen so much as a fight there in all the years that I hosted jams. And I did host jams on like Thursday nights or whatever for quite a few years at what was then Uncle Sam's. I don't think I ever saw a fight. Um, yeah, we anything. went there. We went there on the very first one when they opened, uh, when uh, Lynn did his first one and, uh, and Doug McGrew and, and uh, Manuel, Manny, Manny. Uh, and it, we had, uh, we forgot to lock our car and it was way out in the back where the parking is. Oh. And we thought for sure it'd get broken into. And, uh, you know, to me, it looked pretty, you know, but when I walked in and I listened to these people and I couldn't find a place to sit because the place is packed and these people helped me find a place and they were so good. Uh, it, it was amazing. So I, I agree with you. It's a good Well, hold place. on now. My lawyer ears kicked in there. You left it open so they yeah. wouldn't have had to break in. Did they get in? Did yeah, they well, first? <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> but yeah, they never touched it. And I, oh, I was well, amazed. You got a little lucky because let's be honest, there's, there's some neighborhoods around there that might be a little sketchy, yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, I, I never had a problem there. And I do, I'm going to, I'm going to shout out to every biker constituency and every biker out there. I've always tried to, and again, me, you know, it's a Craig Beerman thing. He's, he's part of the biker organization. That's our constituency. That's our colors. I don't care what colors they are. They're still my colors. I used to ride a little bit. I made a deal with bikes many, many years ago that I wouldn't <laughs> ride them anymore. And so they wouldn't kill me or they wouldn't lay me down before I broke my hands. So, but I used to enjoy that, the freedom of it. And I, you know, shout out to all those proud, independent American rock and rolling bikers. Cause by God, some of them are the guys that want to come to the shows that, you know, the big shows that Craig will be putting on with the Hell's Bells or Sub Vinyl or Randy or whoever it is. And we'll all be there rocking harder and harder because the bikers are there. If the bikers are there, it's a party. I'm sorry. It just is. Yeah. So shout out yeah, to the bikers I, of America. I've had, my, I've had my time on bikes and uh, I, I don't ride. I ride in the back. <laughs> but, well, but you know exactly many, what I'm talking miles. about then. There's I nothing like the freedom of it and there's nothing like the independence. And nobody does that like we like we do here uh, in America and particularly in the Northwest to my, yeah. for my life. And, and I played for bikers. My our band has played for bikers. We haven't had nothing but respect from them. So, uh, and my daughter rides a bike. She's a firefighter in Oregon. So, uh, yeah, I have no problem with that. I think they're good people. Well, I mean, you, 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 what you want to do if you're a rocker like me, you want to be like all. Oh. Get your motor running. <laughs> Head on down the highway, <laughs> looking for adventure. Hey, whatever comes our way, I'm not gonna make it happen. Take the world into love and bread. Fire all of your guns at once and explode into space. <laughs> cool. Oh you my go. gosh, I gotta see you. I gotta I had see to get you. That <laughs> How are we doing on time? Are, you must well, be close. Um, yeah, I, 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 we might end up going a little over. Do we have another appointment? or Another gonna... minute or so, did you say? Yeah. Okay, well. All right. So the last question I want to ask you, um, well, two actually. Um, what have you got coming up in the future other than what you've already mentioned? And um, number two, what is the most interesting thing that has ever happened to you during the time that you've been playing? As, as far as more stuff coming up, I honestly can't say that I have more flavors planned in the hopper. I think I'm up, you know, I'm up to five now with the new uh, Leonard Sinner, Skinner band. <laughs> and which again, I'm singing, which is a departure and is, is taking some, is putting a new, spin a new aspect on on things on life because i'm having to do things like take care of my voice now in ways that i never yeah. had to before yeah. which 
but things that will be happening again will be hosting some fans from jams at uh at rumors some of them i can't tell you exactly the dates i think the first one is going to be saturday march 12th if i'm not mistaken as i mentioned eric asplund will be hosting there every other saturday night and he's going to have some great guitar players and drummers along with him uh, but he's holding the reins on the jam, and mm -hmm. I'm just going to be one of his guitar players on March 12th. I want to say April something, a couple of dates in May. So we have them planned out. So that's new. As far as the most interesting thing that's ever happened to me, the most interesting. I mean, you're you're kind of requiring me to go through a lot of footage here. <laughs> most interesting <laughs> thing. Well, the most interesting thing might have been when. I, it was, uh, I turned to Renee at the Stonegate pizza place where we were, you know, where I was courting her about probably five years ago. And I looked into her eyes and noticed that there was this absolute look of like love and devotion. I said to myself, well, I really see something there. So that was probably the most interesting thing I've ever seen or that's ever happened to me when uh, she came into my life. Cause I'm going to, I'm going to say she's been amazing for me and, uh, she's, just as I have transformed her, she's transformed me. And we've been really good for one another. And uh, it's been a journey and we're still on it. You know, it's that's what, if it was perfect, then it wouldn't be any fun because we'd all be done and everything would be great. But it is a work in, pro in process, as is she, as am I. Uh, so I'm going to say that was probably the most interesting thing that ever happened to me. If, if I, You're a good I, man, Howard. We have one <laughs> last comment that there's there's a lot of people out here giving shout outs to JB and and uh, Bon Kitty Scott, I believe it says here. Bon well, Scott Kitty, and, yes. Shout and, out to and, JB and Shaughnessy, has, my, he, one of my right hand men in the rock and roll organization, great acoustic okay. player. Shout out to Bon <laughs> Scott Kitty. I was hoping he was going to come back and get back in on the action, but he's He's running around. <laughs> and then also Andrea says, hello, Howard, enjoy great interviews. So that was Hi Andrea Hollister. So, oh, <laughs> yeah, that her as well. So it's about closing time. Gosh, I hate to leave this. this is, I could go on with you for another whole hour, guy. And you're impossible to keep down. I mean, you are like, uh, you must just stone gate those judges and they just say, OK, <laughs> innocent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think they have their way their way with me. But uh, well, I think Lynn did call me irrepressible once. He has a way you with words. You are. He's very, he's very ir erudite. I think he called me ir irrepressible, which I think is <laughs> probably pretty accurate. Better than that in names. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, guy, I really enjoyed the interview. I think you um, you really let yourself shine through. And obviously, you're a family man, and I can appreciate that. And I do want to thank you for being here today. Uh, I have to see you in person. I hope I can get there on March 12th or whatever that Saturday is. Yes, um, please Donald do. That'll be a good jam. We'll get, we'll get you up to sing at, at the jam. I mean, oh, we'll play. God. <laughs> you play country? Of course, we'll play country for you. We'll do it. Absolutely. You say we play. <laughs> I love it. All right, Howard. Well, you have a good rest of your day. And thank you for making time for us. And thank you to all the listeners out there who made great comments and listened today. And I'm sure there will be more people listening to you as this time goes by. So thank you once again, everybody. And I'm signing off. Bye, Howard. Bye -bye. Great playing. <laughs> thank you. I love it. Love it. See you guys later. Bye. Let's keep rocking, baby. Woo!